My name is uh, Chris Chase from South Dakota State University, and I'm a veterinarian, uh, immunologist, and a virologist. And one of our, our big interests has certainly been, has been bovine respiratory disease. And over the years, I have studied it. And the most interesting thing about it is in spite of the fact that we've uh, done many things in terms of vaccines and antibiotics, uh, this disease continues to actually grow. Uh, this has really kind of uh, led me to start thinking about uh, what we do in terms of managing animals, and particularly um, how we feed animals, uh, and particularly as it relates to the microbiome. So the microbiome is the different uh, microorganisms that we find in the intestinal tract uh, of an animal. Uh, and we know, in fact, that, that these microorganisms are essential for immune development. So understanding how they interact, particularly with, with the gut and the epithelium of the gut, uh, is really important. You know? And one of the things that we have really discovered over the last uh, really five to 10 years is, is the importance of those epithelial cells of the, of the gut and the respiratory tract. Uh, in terms of there being an immune organ. In other words, that, that they behave, uh, and in fact, are the largest immune organ, uh, and that they have, they're not just there to absorb and secrete, but in fact, they are there to also pick up signals, and particularly pick up signals from the microbiome, uh, and take those signals to actually keep the intestinal tract from overreacting. And that's really, as we look at immunity, we often think that immunity is what's is a really good thing, uh, but we've also found, again, in the last 10 years or so, that in fact, immunity, too much immunity, is not a good thing. So we, what we want to do is maintain what we call homeostasis, the idea that the, the two are, are well balanced, that the, we've got enough immunity so that the animal can respond, but not too much uh, that it results in disease. And so when we look at the, particularly at the epithelium, uh, we realize that what it, what it does is it, it uh, provides uh, through mucus a part of the barrier uh, and in the, in the mucus itself, there's uh, different molecules, uh, one of them called uh, antimicrobial peptides. And what they are is basically kind of the body's own antibiotics. And they are induced um, both by uh, the, the microbiome or the, or the commensals that are in the intestinal tract along with the immune system itself. So uh, that's a, a really important area. Uh, the second thing that's in that, um, in that mucus is something called IgA. Uh, and that's an immunoglobulin. It's a secretory immunoglobulin. So it turns out it's the largest uh, immunoglobulin produced in the body in terms of quantity uh, and also in terms of how fast uh, it, it occurs in terms of different surfaces that it covers. Uh, and again, having healthy epithelial cells is absolutely essential for that because they export that antibody to, uh, to the surface. Uh, and then the, the th other thing that we now understand, it's is really important, which we know from the barrier effect, is the fact that these cells need to be, have what's called tight junctions. They're basically knit together. Uh, and those junctions that are knit together are actually, in fact, uh, the, the result of, of uh, the immune response. In other words, uh, if the immune system is doing what it's supposed to be, not overreacting, those, those tight junctions are knit together very tightly. We, we understand, particularly when, as we look at the mucosa, that it really has four functions in terms of, at least in terms of protecting the animal. Uh, the f that first function is, which is fairly obvious, is the, actually the production of mucus. So they, pr they produce mucus. Uh, in the intestinal tract, that's dictated very closely, actually, um, obviously by hydration, but also in terms of the, of the microorganisms that they're actually ingesting, because that too will have an effect on that. In general, we typically want that mucus layer to be relatively thick. A second thing is the production of something called antimicrobial peptides. So what those are are really the body's own antibiotics. And again, they too are induced um, by the, the commensals of the microorganisms that are in the intestinal tract and their products will have an effect on, on the levels of those, as will responses that occur from the immune system itself. So again, that helps us. And, and if you can think about it, we think about that as what I call a kill zone, that there's actually with that mucus that's close to the intestinal cells along with these antimicrobial, antimicrobial peptides forms this kill zone. In addition then to the antimicrobial peptides of the body's natural uh, antibiotics, we also have then uh, IgA, and IgA is the largest antibody or produced in the body. And IgA, uh, although it's not produced by epithelial cells, it's exported uh, by those cells uh, to the lumen. And it too, uh, its production is also re regulated to some degree by these commensal organisms that are in the intestinal tract. So that, so the antimicrobial peptides and mucus and the IgA all make up then this really this kill zone, which helps us in terms of being able to protect uh, 
the mucosa and the epithelium from infection. And then the final part that the, uh, the immune system and the mucosa have is, is the formation of tight junctions. So tight junctions are the kind of the knitting that occurs uh, between cells uh, to keep it very tight so bacteria can't get through, uh, other metabolites can't get through, uh, and we know it's regulated by the immune system because again when there's a, an inflammation occurs, those tight junctions break down uh, and that allows the bacteria and other things to, to seep through, which then turns on the immune response uh, in what we call a pro-inflammatory way. But when we see inflammation, what happens is the fact they begin to break down and we see leaky gut, and that's, and that's a, a big problem in terms of certainly uh, the animal's immune response because when that intestinal tract begins to leak, what happens then is bacteria get in, uh, food gets, be able, starts uh, coming across, and it turns on the inflammatory response. Uh, and that inflammatory response is, I mean, it's the body's response to an infection, which it's supposed to do, but oftentimes, particularly in that scenario, it's too robust. In other words, it causes what we call collateral damage. And the thing about that collateral damage is it's not just at the level of the gut, but actually can be at, uh, throughout the body because what happens is these uh, inflammatory uh, mediators, they, uh, they affect uh, the liver, they affect the brain. So the things that we see in terms of, of decreased appetite, uh, uh, listlessness, uh, the fever response, all those things are mitigated um, by these inflammatory mediators. And then the other uh, effect that they have is on the bone marrow to actually increase the production of white blood cells. So that being able to keep this system uh, uh, under control is really important. And, and then the third area is the liver. Uh, so there what they do is they have, a, have a, uh, the tendency to turn on acute phase proteins and they turn the liver from being a very efficient metabolism machine to a rather inefficient uh, immune organ which then results in energy being used at, at, to respond to that immune response, which, which then takes away from growth and lean or milk production. So being able to maintain that immune system and ma maintain the homeostasis is really important. So uh, that's why, uh, again, understanding how we can sort of minimize stress, uh, that we can make sure that we have good dietary intakes, uh, that we make sure that animals are well hydrated, all affect how, really, how the intestinal tract is gonna operate which then is going to really affect uh, what it's going to do to the immune system. Now, the other thing that we know, again, about this, the mucosa uh, of the gut is that, uh, again, it's important in terms of giving us long-term immunity, which we call adaptive immunity. So that's, again, uh, one of the things that it does. That adaptive immunity, which is why it's uh, sort of important in the, in the intestinal tract, is localized. So it's just in that particular area, uh, but it does interact, for example, if we simulate an immune response, uh, an IgA response in the intestinal tract, we'll see that same response actually in the lung, or we'll see that same res response in the reproductive tract. So those things and being able to coordinate all those uh, is really important. So as we look at that in terms of managing innate immunity, one of the things that certainly comes into that is, is by uh, feeding prebiotics or probiotics, actually sending those signals to the, to the epithelium. So again, we have good mucus production, we have the production of those antimicrobial peptides, the production of IgA. So again, we keep that gut really, really healthy. And at the same time, helping it maintain that anti-inflammatory response is, is really important. So that's, you know, I think as we look at the, the studies then of, of these probiotics and prebiotics, it's really going to continue to be, I think, something that we're going to use more and more. Another way that we can have to manage this inflammatory response is actually through the use of non-steroidal uh, anti inflammatory so aspirin being probably one that we think of right off the bat. Uh, again, that, so ins instead when we know that animals are under stress, because when they're under stress, they're really much more susceptible to inflammation. So during those times, either prior to stress or during stress that we can use prebiotics, probiotics, non-steroidals, probably makes great sense in terms of managing and, and minimizing disease. Now the other, other thing again that we know about the adaptive immune response and the mucosa is that in fact, Scattered throughout the uh, intestinal mucosa and the respiratory mucosa are things that we call lymphoid follicles. And that's really where that adaptive response, the response that gives us that long-term memory occurs. Uh, and again, the beauty of that is it's specific and it's long-lasting. But the, the thing that makes it sort of extra uh, special, I would say, in the intestinal tract is that it's right in the neighborhood. So it's right there to be able to help uh, and, and be used as it's needed right along the intestinal tract. 
Uh, and so it doesn't have to go like it does for the systemic response to regional lymph nodes and those kind of things. So that's really, I think, a key that we see uh, with that. So as we look at managing immunity and managing particularly the intestinal tract and its interaction with other uh, tissues, it's, I think it's, again, it's, it's important that we think about, again, feeding uh, those uh, materials like prebiotics and probiotics that will help us with that health. Also in terms of hydration, that these animals are well hydrated, and they certainly need to have, have good intakes. And if we, I think, do, all, do those things, we're gonna help ourselves in terms of minimizing a disease and the inflammatory response.